been here, I've never had a more optimistic feeling headed into session, and I think my members behind me, thank you for joining me, uh, share that optimism. We have unparalleled uh, cooperation and work between the, the governor's office, ourself, and the speaker's office. Uh, it's, it's been a great interim trying to work with them to come up with policy. But today is to announce the Senate agenda. All 39 members of our caucus have participated in one way, shape, or form in forming this agenda. When I first uh, asked the agenda committee, led by Majority Leader Senator David, to uh, form the agenda, I said it needs to be concise, it needs to be precise, uh, and it needs to be bold. And they achieved just that. Uh, I'm very excited to unveil uh, the agenda here shortly. I think all of you have copies. If you don't, Aaron has some in the back. But we only, we only focus on four areas. Uh, it's, it's a very concise agenda. But the theme of this session, in large part, is restoring trust. Restoring trust with the public, uh, that they can have confidence in the legislative process. Restoring trust with the governor's office and, the, uh, and our counterparts in the House. We've gone a long way over the interim to do that, but we want to, to have the public trust. Uh, we're, we're not immune to seeing the numbers on public trust about the legislature, and this agenda is all about restoring trust in the different areas. We're going to have four main focus areas, uh, education investment and reform, government accountability, budget transparency, and continued work on criminal justice reform. Senator David here shortly will lay out more specifics on those, and we'll take questions after her and the Appropriations Chairman Roger Thompson speak. But this is a bold agenda. It's all about restoring trust and restoring accountability in the process. Uh, I'm extremely excited that session starts in six days, and I think we will have an ex a very, very productive session. Very uh, optimistic about my conversations with Governor Stitt. Speaker McCall, in fact, we had breakfast this morning, and we continue to work together to improve Oklahoma. Without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Senator David so she can lay out the agenda in more, more detail. Hey, good morning, everyone. Um, the Senate Republicans' agenda shows our commitment to making a lasting positive impact for Oklahoma. Um, the government accountability piece will let the governor hire and fire director agent, the directors of agencies and we believe that that lets the people of Oklahoma be able to judge the successes and failures of the governor's leadership. Education investment continues to be a top priority for us. We took historic steps last year in giving a 15% teacher pay raise. We plan on protecting that investment. And we look for ways to build on that momentum. Um, the four-day school weeks, as we all know, have hurt Oklahoma on the national stage. Um, what we want to do is um, be able to incentivize our schools to go back to that five-day school week. We've had difficulties bringing in businesses. It's hurt our workforce. So if we can incentivize schools to go back to five-day school week, then that's what we're going to do. We're going to look for ways to do that. Um, if there are schools that want to um, be able to come up and talk to us about they can still save money working on that four-day school week, they're still showing high student achievements, then we also want to be able to give exemptions where, where we can. But um, otherwise, you know, this five-day school week is, is where we're planning on going. Um, with that, I'm going to turn this over to Senator Thompson, and he can talk about the appropriation side. Well, good morning. It's great to be with you this morning. Our uh, economy is doing well. It's a whole lot better than 2014 whenever I was elected. I think this is the first year that we'll go into session of having just a little bit of money. Uh, that's due to the fact that there were some very tough decisions uh, that was made over the, the last uh, two years, and especially last year, uh, on increasing the revenue for the state, and of course with our business community is also uh, getting better. The final revenue numbers will be seen uh, in February, and I remain cautiously optimistic about those numbers, and uh, look forward to uh, working with Chairman Wallace in the House and uh, with the governor's staff as we move forward on some of the priorities. A lot of the items that you heard today in the agenda will require an additional investment. The priorities that the Senate is laying out, we're willing then to work on the budget end of it to make sure that those same points are funded 
as we move forward. One of the areas of working on the budget is budget transparency. Uh, Senate Bill 1 uh, by Senator Treat uh, is going to call for a legislative budget office, and uh, it will be an office of transparency. It will be an office that we hope to have uh, forensic economists uh, that are part of that, that can not only look at the budget and the clarity of that budget now, but also do some forecasting for the future. Where do they see us going? What's going on? And so we are excited about that uh, as well. One of the areas you're going to see uh, another investment in is in diversion programs and criminal justice reform. I'm carrying uh, two bills. Uh, one is going to deal with bail and making sure that we're not just keeping people in jail because they can't afford bail. We want them out. Uh, the second is restructuring how that we fund our court system. And uh, that will be from the GR instead of off of fees and fines. And so you'll see some major work that is going forward this year. Excited to be the appropriations chair. Thank you, Senator David, for leading us through some very tough years as appropriations chair. And as compared to that, this is really going to be a great year. Thank you for being here today. Mr. Pro Tem. Yeah, uh, we wanted to lay out a target, a vision for where we want to take the state of Oklahoma. And we wanted to draw the target bright, not something that after session we draw the target of where the arrow landed. But before session started, we wanted to draw where our vision to take the state of Oklahoma is. I'm very proud of the work my caucus members put into it. And we are going to work extremely hard to try to get this agenda through. We can't do it alone. We've got to work with our counterparts that I've already mentioned. The dialogue on all of these agenda items has already started. We're well down the road on trying to, to get agreement on the specifics on these agenda items. But at this point, we'll take any questions you may have. The agenda, the way we have it envisioned, is restoring the five-day school week, but providing reasonable exceptions to that standard. So if the school can both show there's an economic savings and that there's no adverse impact on child-student achievement, uh, there will be reasonable exceptions in the bill. Otherwise, five-day school week will be restored. So who, what's the clearinghouse? I mean, who's going to make that decision? Is it the legislature, the State Department of Education? The, the details of that will be worked out. More than likely, the State Department of Education would have that remedy, the application process. We need to work with our counterparts and Superintendent Hoffmeister's office to try to come up with the actual detailed how do you, how do you get this exemption granted. But we wanted to make sure that on the national stage, when you're trying to recruit business, uh, when you're trying to get people to invest in Oklahoma, one of the big uh, impediments to that is this uh, impression that all of our schools are four-day school weeks. You hear that time and again from business recruiters. It's also been a hardship on parents trying to find an extra day of child care for that uh, during a work week. And so we've heard loud and clear from our, our uh, Oklahomans, fellow Oklahomans, that we need to restore that five-day week. Important and important to our caucus and to our fellow citizens is giving some flexibility to local school districts to make the best decision they can. That's the reason you would have the uh, providing reasonable exemptions. What about money? Are you going to put some additional dollars down for those districts who say it's just not economically feasible to go back to five days? Well, part of it is providing that they can show some economic savings. If they can show economic savings without an adverse impact on students, then that counters that, that argument. So, so no money is involved in this? Not, not on this way. We, however, we just made the largest investment in education in state history, the largest increase. We're going to keep that commitment. You hear a lot of times people talking about one-time funding and is, is that funding secure. The Oklahoma Senate Republican Caucus is adam, adamantly uh, committed to making sure that the funding stays there uh, in perpetuity to make sure that we, we keep our word to teachers, keep our word to Oklahomans that we were serious about the teacher pay raise. We're serious about making education a priority. And we're going to continue on that, on that track of making Oklahoma uh, very competitive in the region and nationally. A lot of districts that are on four-day savings because of savings for teachers, would that not We need to make sure that the student is put first. So the student achievement has to be first and foremost. Uh, why does the education system exist? It's to make sure kids are prepared for the future. And so I think the first priority would make sure there's no adverse impact on that student achievement. A lot of people have been waiting pretty patiently for the legislature to take up the issue of medical marijuana, so a lot of the action. Why is that not a priority on the Yeah, well, 
uh, it is a priority. It's just not part of our agenda. Uh, there are going to be obviously issues outside of the four points that we have here that we're going to focus on intently. I don't know if Senator McCourtney is, he didn't want to have the question on it, but uh, 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 Senator McCourtney and his counterpart, Representative Eccles, uh, along with the people that we appointed to the interim uh, uh, bicameral working group, have put in countless hours of work on it. We are committed to making sure that the will of the people uh, is fulfilled and it's done in a, in a way that um, is safe and efficient. So we're still committed to that. You'll see us work on that early on in session. It just wasn't uh, one of the four things that we think is going to move Oklahoma uh, into a much better position competitively with the rest of the, uh, of the country. Well, we have the appropriations chairman of the Senate that I'm going to turn that over to. Uh, I, I will give you a word of caution. Uh, the, what I call the pre-certification uh, that showed $612 million in additional monies. Uh, that's not going to be there, in my opinion, in my estimation, when it comes to the, the certification that we actually base the, the budget on in February. Um, and so I'm going to turn it over to Senator Thompson so he can give you a better picture of what he thinks is, is reasonable there. I appreciate the question. Uh, as Pro Tem said, we will not be working more than likely with $612 million. Uh, we have a number of other obligations that we will have to address. I do appreciate the Department of Education putting forward a, a plan and uh, that we can get to being the, the type of school that they want to be in the top ten. However, as of today, we have about $3.5 billion of new requests to take out of $612 million if we had all the $612 million. And so it's logical that we're not going to be able to fund all of those things. I think what you heard the pro team say a little bit earlier, education is a priority. And we're going to be looking at education hard, making sure we get dollars back into the classroom. What's more reasonable amount than 430? From my estimation of where we are today, and if everything stays neutral where we are today, snapshot in time, we're probably looking at around about 200 million, 250 million of something like that of, of new money. Uh, that is, could change depending on the oil and gas prices that are out that direction, uh, the tax collections that are coming in. And so that's why I made mention in my opening remarks being cautiously optimistic. It's just for clarification, that's for education, 250 million more? No, 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 that's up and above where we were the same time last year. That's, that's, that's it. It's not the 612. I think whenever you minus off some of the Avalorum reimbursement, some of the other things that we need to pay, we may be looking at between 150 and 200 million more than we had last year. Chairman Thompson, can you flesh out uh, your statement involving uh, changes in how you fund the courts from using fees and fines to general revenue, and would that also apply to the district attorney's council? Many, many of the courts are tied together going backwards. Uh, some of the district attorney's councils are funded off of some of the fees uh, that they have whenever that you get a ticket. My main focus is going to be through the court system, uh, the Supreme Court, the appellate courts, and the district courts. You're talking about about $80 million to be able to do that. And uh, the majority of that today comes off of the fees. I look for this to be probably a two-year process as we're working uh, through that, making sure that we get the funding in there, and then the legislature can go back and look at whatever fees they would like to have at that particular time. We've got to do something in criminal justice reform. It's not working the way that it is. Our fee collection is down, and whenever that we look in Tulsa County, we're only collecting about 30% of what they did uh, previously, so from a million down to about 300,000, Oklahoma County is a little bit better than that. So we, we need to do better in our structure, but we need to be funding the courts, and so we're not funding that off the backs of fees. The, the, I think his answer was trying to clarify what the $612 million more realistic is going to be in February. I'm not going to uh, cast judgment on the, the request from education, but obviously if you have $3.5 billion in requests for $612 million, uh, we've got our work cut out for us. So every legislator who's come before me has told me, uh, Greg, you're going to love, love uh, deficits by the time you get to a surplus because surplus is harder. Everyone's fighting over it. I'd much rather be in this position, though. We're in a good position to make true investments in education, uh, very uh, reasonable fu funding for criminal justice reform and other priorities of state government. 
So we're in a good position. We're just not in a position to be able to, to deliver on all $3.5 billion request, obviously. We have bills filed on the top six agencies right now. Uh, we're open to having discussions about others. I think Governor Stitt is really focused on the, the top um, five, in my opinion. I think that's what he's, he's said publicly. Uh, we're wanting to make sure that we have a more efficient, more accountable state government, and giving the governor the ability to hire and fire those directors gives a great deal more accountability to taxpayers of Oklahoma. It's on our agenda, so it's pretty widely supported in our caucus. I don't say that flippantly, but it was, it was not without a lot of discussion, uh, making sure that we felt comfortable there. Uh, but absolutely, I think there's growing momentum. There's going to be some differences around the edges we're going to have to work out. Uh, but yes, I think there is growing support for that concept. I'm curious about all this agenda. Is Medicaid expansion going to be a topic of discussion at all? Obviously, uh, when you talk to the hospital groups and everyone else, it's still a, a discussion that comes up uh, over and over. Healthcare is extremely important. Uh, we've got to get to real numbers on that. We've been, uh, I've been talking personally, uh, I'm sure my colleagues have too, to hospitals. Uh, there's been some people who have some creative solutions through Insure Oklahoma and everything, but nothing has been worked out. No agreement has been, been reached, but we're wanting to make sure that we deliver healthcare services uh, to underserved areas, and uh, we will we will talk through that as session uh, goes goes on. I'm at all concerned that should you not address Medicaid expansion, it might wind up in the initiative petition process and wind up on the ballot. Uh, I, as the leader of, of the Senate, uh, don't govern from a place of fear. I'm not going to be pushed to a position based on someone else's action, uh, inside or outside of this building. We're obviously cognizant that there's uh, some people doing that. We'd much prefer to be able to have uh, some discussions, robust discussions within the House and the Senate to come up with solutions on health care. Uh, but no, that, that, that's not a driving force on the discussion. Any other questions? Thank you all for being here. Thank you for my colleagues being here as well.